Hello again everybody, you made it just in time, I'm so glad you're here because we're gonna talk about some flesh and blood lore today. Today we're gonna talk about the Kingdom of Illumination, also known as Solana. I think after making the Aria video and hearing all of your interest in all of just the various lore topics, things like the Old Ones and the Ancients, which we don't technically know a ton about, um, I think the best place to start with all of that in order to understand the entire story thus far is to kind of know about Solana, to know about the Demonastery, and how those two things are intermixed. And we, of course, as we go on, we may cover the, you know, the, the Kingdom of Volcor and Mysteria. Mysteria is actually in this book. We'll cover the Savage Lands, but I think the most important two topics to cover are Solana, and then the Demonastery, because those two are inexorably linked, not only in, you know, the Monarch set that was just released, I guess released a little over a month and a half ago, but also in the lore from centuries ago, and in a very interesting way as well. So let's start by just covering Solana, and then maybe in another video we'll cover the Demonastery, and then finally we'll talk about you know, what's happening with the two of them, and uh, why they are at war. I guess it's pretty easy to understand why. Some of the underlying motivations and key, very interesting plot points therein. Before we get too far into it, though, I do want to give a huge shout-out and highlight to Uncharted Realms. They're going to be running a bunch of Discord and online Armory and Play Anywhere events going forward every Sunday around 2 p.m. Eastern. They're giving away a ton of prizes, some of which are very, very good. I think they're even going to give away an Eye of Ophidia. So if you want to play in some of those events, I know I will be playing in them. So come join me and them over on their Discord. Link's in the description. By the way, there's also a brand new affiliate link down in the description as well. If you want to buy cards at Fab TCG Cards, Jim over there at Fab TCG Cards is an absolute wonderful human being. He and I have been friends for a while, and uh, it was just a natural fit to get you guys an affiliate link so that you can buy stuff through him as well and help support the channel along the way. So with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in to Solana. Legend speaks of blessed pilgrims from a distant land, drawn to Wraith by the will of Sol. Upon sacred ground they built Solana, a shining kingdom that would stand eternal against the shadow. The city has stood tall for thousands of years, thriving under the guidance of devout scholars and wizards of light. Knights and Templars patrol its walls, defending it from those who would trespass against its divine purpose. One day the light of soul will radiate throughout the land and bring its blessings to all of humanity. Now a couple of things within this just very short little blurb that I just read. We actually don't know what soul is. Uh, it could be an old one, though I'm not quite sure that's the case. Uh, it could be, though it could be, if the old ones are the creators and the progenitors of the world. Uh, it could be an ancient. Either way, we know that uh, this is essentially the deity of these people. A Solanian is basically trying to uphold the ideals of soul in their everyday life. And we can see that right here. The people of Solana honor Sol in every aspect of their lives, from the young to the old, scholars to farmers, from those who live within its walls to those who live beyond, all rejoice under the infinite wisdom and glory of Sol. So all very devout, all very single-mindedly focused on just, you know, doing what Sol wants to do, basically. Um, by the way, this is absolutely fantastically beautiful art. We can find this art on Nature's Path Pilgrimage. Uh, we can also find this art just slightly modified and looking a lot less happy on Dusk Path Pilgrimage. Very interesting to note that we have uh, eight different gates within this city. There are eight different gates on the walls and eight different paths leading to the center of the city. And yes, this city is Solana. And it basically, that's it. I mean, there's this giant city, and there's the golden fields around Solana. But outside of that, that is basically Solana. So when we look on the map, and I'm going to just quickly turn back to the map. 
when we look at the world map, we see Solana here. The golden fields stretch quite far within the world of Wraith. We can assume that I'm, you know, I'm just taking this and seeing that if we're looking geographically, that is a that is a lot of golden fields that uh, take up Solana or that make up Solana, I should say. Now it's at this point that I want to pause and highlight something very interesting that we've seen happen. If you've kept up with the lore on the FabTCG website, and if you haven't, that's okay. You, you don't need to. That's why you've got so many great content creators. Hopefully, I can join their ranks and provide you some lore content every now and again. The, the lore of Flesh and Blood is not set in stone. Yes, this book has many uh, facts, many stories, uh, has a lot of information about the various regions that we've seen thus far, but they're ever-changing, and in fact, they're sort of being added to. And we can see this on the Fab TCG website, because if you go to the website, much of this information in this book is there, but there's new entries that can't be found in this book, and one of those is this little cutout, this little section under the History of Illumination tab. It says, in time, Solana's radiance drew attention from a malevolent gaze, and the fledgling city found itself targeted by the onslaught of the Shadow, a great evil which spread forth intent on extinguishing the light. Despite this sinister force, which threatened to overwhelm them, the Solanians stood strong, fortified by their faith, and refused to bow before the foul storm. Now, this could be referencing literally what we see happening in Monarch, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this is a centuries-old battle or assault. And the reason I say that is because the city of Solana is referenced as a fledgling city. And if we go back to the, the book itself, uh, we can see, Once a small township, the wisdom of soul has guided the city throughout the ages, all for soul's divine purpose. Now a mighty kingdom, the most powerful in the land, its people seek to spread the glory and teachings of soul throughout Wraith, yada, 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 you get the picture. So we see two different entries here. We see a history of illumination, and uh, we see it being referred to as a fledgling city. And then in the book, we see it referred to as a small township. But then through the guidance and wisdom of soul, it grows into the most powerful city and kingdom in the land. So we know that uh, the, the shadow has been assaulting, off and on perhaps, uh, the city of Solana and the kingdom of Solana throughout centuries. Uh, but we're seeing something a little bit different in Monarch, and that's something that we may cover down the road. Back to the lore book we go, and we have different sections of this city that are mentioned within the city diagram. We have uh, the Solarium, which is the inner sanctum, home to the light of soul, which is very interesting. We have the Amphitheater, which is a space for ceremonies, public events, proclamations. We have the Silvaris, which is a series of beautiful public gardens. Then, of course, on the outside, we have the Golden Fields, which just stretch on for a long, long time. Uh, numerous villages and towns under the production and guidance of Solana are found there. We have the Great Gates, which, like I said, there are eight great gates centered around the, uh, the walls. And then we have the plazas, which connect the outer city sectors, a space to gather and hear news. Oh, I shouldn't forget the Library of Illumination, perhaps one of the most important, if not the most important section of Solana. The next page talks about the various uh, areas and gives little blurbs on each of them. The Solarium is basically summed up as a massive complex of shining towers that rise above the streets of Solana. They've been made long ago by the finest materials, and it stands eternal, a timeless reminder of soul's glory. Cast in white and gold, remains visible from every corner of the city. Everything leads to the Solarium, as you can see the Solarium, like we go back to the, uh, the picture, this is the Solarium, the very center of the city. So the, it's the thing that you can see from far away, no matter where you're standing, once you've gotten to the fields, which are, of course, plains. An interesting section down here, the Signaris, which is not talked about on the map, is hidden beneath the earth, and it's a massive vault guarded by physical and powerful magic, physical defenses and powerful wards, as it's called. Throughout history, many ancient artifacts have surfaced, 
and since the time of the first Grand Magister, Solana has been retrieving these items and keeping them safe from those who might use them for nefarious purposes. The Signaris remains a well-guarded secret known only to the highest ranking members of the Light of Soul. And the Light of Soul is a, I guess you can describe it as a sect of, uh, of both religious and military leaders. Uh, which we'll talk about on the next page, actually. Before we turn the page, however, we do need to cover the Library of Illumination, and this is most likely, I mean 99% sure, that this is the Great Library of Solana, just referred to as the Library of Illumination here in the book. I mean, it's a public library cared for by members of the Light of Soul, and that's exactly what we see in the Great Library of Solana artwork, which is an absolutely beautiful piece. Those seeking knowledge travel to Solana for the sole purpose of visiting the Library of Illumination, a vast library located at the base of the Solarium. A grand sight, the floor is constructed from lustrous marble with floor-to-ceiling shelves containing thousands of tomes and volumes as well as bound parchments authored by the scholars of Solana. Important to note that any Solanian can enter and read the tomes found within the library which includes Solanian history, any information on the various districts of Solana. It also houses public records, such as family trees, or details on significant individuals. Travelers visiting Solana from beyond the Cinea are also welcome to spend time here. The lower levels of the library, however, are located beneath the earth and are only available to members of the Light of Soul, which strikes me as the perfect segue to talking about the Light of Soul. But before we do, I think we should pause and reflect on what is just a beautiful piece of art. Like, look at that. That is just fantastic. Just the way it stretches across the pages, it really does capture exactly what you would, uh, what you'd be kind of picturing in your mind. Here's a particularly interesting section of the work, of the painting, if you will, the digital painting, uh, where we see, like, I, it looks almost like a, uh, a statue, but it's glittering, shining, perhaps being, like, I don't know, imbued with some magic. Very interesting. Looks like a soul holding up something. I don't know. So, talking about the Order of the Light and the Light of Soul. These are, this is very important to understand both how the city functions, but also some very interesting story implications. So this is perhaps the, the most meaty of the sections. So the Order of the Light. The Light is the lifeblood of Solana, a radiant energy born of soul. It is knowledge, wisdom, and integrity. It is valor and loyalty. The light guided Solana's founders to the shores of Wraith. It showed them where to build their homes. It is what protects the city from the shadows. Solana is blessed by the splendor of Sol, a radiant figure that has guided Solana to become the shining example for all of Wraith. The Order of the Light was born of these ancestors, noble men and women who seek to spread Sol's blessings and watch over the people of Solana. The Light of Soul is comprised of scholars, those born with a connection to light magic, studying spells in order to help their fellow man. The Hand of Soul are Solana's warriors, dedicated to protecting and watching over their people. So we have two sections, or two, I guess, divisions of the same order. The Order of Light is made up, as you can see here, the Order of Light is made up of the Light of Soul and the Hand of Soul. This is the hierarchy of the Hand of Soul. It begins at the trainee level. You then move to the Squire. You then advance to Knighthood, which is where uh, most of Dorinthia's story was spent. She was a knight for most of it. At the end of her story, spoiler alert, she becomes a Lieutenant, and then above Lieutenant is the Templar. And the Templar have been pictured. Hala is a Templar in uh, the story of Dorinthia. And we've seen Templar on several of the cards within the uh, the just Solanian and warrior class, I should say. The Light of Souls hierarchy is also very interesting. It starts with Seeker, and you then move to Acolyte, moving to Scholar, and then Chancellor, and then you move up to Archon. Then there's the Magister and the Grand Magister, and Grand Magister is the top of the top, and that brings us to the first Grand Magister, which is very important. The first Grand Magister was known as the Devout 
Under their guidance of the devout, the construction of the city of Solana began, starting with what's known as the Library of Illumination. And this is why I call this perhaps the most important building or, um, I guess, thing within Solana, because the library was built first, and it was built first on purpose, really. The Grand Magister decreed that knowledge was sacred to soul, and that Solana would become a grand kingdom. It would not become it without first becoming a well-educated one. They sent out scholars to gather ancient tomes and scrolls from all over Wraith and founded the Grand Council to help manage the growing city. By the way, the Grand Council is listed up here. The Grand Council is a divine assembly which represents the pinnacle of human existence. Its members are hand-selected by soul from amongst the light and hand of soul. The Grand Council is led by the Grand Magister, comprised of all eight magisters and a selection of Archons and Templars. Now again, this is a point where I want to pause and reference back to the website because something has been added to the website that is not in this book and perhaps for a very good reason. So we're gonna transfer back over to the website and take a look at this. Under the Light of Soul section, it describes you know the various uh, possible jobs or positions you might hold within the Light of Soul. And we talked about the, the Light of Soul being made up of you know, seekers, acolytes, scholars, chancellors, archons. If we take a look at this section, we have a, a couple of things that we would expect to see, like magisters and grand magisters. Those are both listed in the Light of Soul section before you actually refer to the Hand of Soul section. Uh, the Gemini technically, while are, you know, listed here in the Light of Soul, they technically fall out of both the uh, Light of Soul category and the Hand of Soul category. They're somewhere gray in the middle. But now we have Illusionists. Illusionist was not listed in the lore book and was not listed prior to the release of Monarch. So Illusionists have been added. This section has been added to the website recently. Again, we see that history is being written constantly. And so you kind of have to be on your toes if you want to know what's going on. This entry says, In Solana, illusionists are hailed as revered emissaries, bringing the light of soul beyond the grand gates of the city. Illusionists are unique in that they draw their power from a keen understanding of the world around them, an ability which allows them to bring the stories and word of soul to life by creating breathtaking spectacles, powerful, tangible illusions which are almost indistinguishable from reality. They are often dispatched with parties of knights to travel to foreign lands, creating visions of the radiant city for outsiders to behold. Now this is very interesting because until we found out that there were going to be illusionists in the game and that there was a light illusionist named Prism, illusionists were only ever mentioned in Aria, but here we now know that illusionists can be found, well, perhaps anywhere at this point. Jumping back to the book as we turn the page, we see the, the Hand of Soul sections covering the Templars, what makes a Templar, some sweet looking masks. We have the uh, art that's found on Ironsong Determination, which is very cool. We have the blurb that I mentioned on the Gemini, which you should definitely read because Shiana Diamond Gemini is a Gemini, which makes sense. But as we turn the page, we get into Jorinthia's story and i'm not going to read through her story in fact you can actually read through her entire story not here on this video but on the website because everything is covered there so this is the city the kingdom the region of solana solana is very focused on furthering the light bringing it to others spreading it and uh, showing the love of soul to the surrounding area. It does stand in stark contrast to the Demonastery, which before we end this video, I think it is worth going back one more time to the website and taking a look at a new entry, again not found in the lore book. The Battle Against the Shadow. Once many centuries ago, an apostate betrayed the people of Solana and turned his back upon the light. Driven mad with power, he embraced the vile corruptions of the shadow and unleashed his toxic ideology upon the world. When the noble warriors of the light sought to stop him, he fled to an isolated island and soiled the earth there with the corruption of the shadows, severing his place of horrors from the rest of Wraith. The demonastery was born of blood and sacrifice, a cursed, blighted castle 
which harbors the horrors of the damned. Ever since, the demon Astri and Solana have stood in direct opposition to one another. It is the nature of the shadow to destroy, seeking to eliminate the light. The light seeks to defend the innocent from the shadows and halt the spread of its vile corruption across the land of Wraith. Solana has fought many battles in its quest to bring an end to the scourge of the shadow. However, for many years, the city knew a kind of peace untouched by the raging wars of their past. Yet in recent times, the peace has come to an end. For the first time in centuries, the demon Astri has struck at the very heart of Solana, raining down shadows upon the city like a vile plague. With the blessings of soul and the guidance of the light, the Solanians have risen to the challenge, taking up arms in their quest to defend all of Wraith from the horrors of the demon Astri. Now, as then, they will drive back the shadow and guide the common people into an era of peace and prosperity. And this ties into another new entry on the website, which will be the last point that we'll cover, called the Blessing of Soul. Throughout the centuries, Solana has fought valiantly against the forces of the shadow, working to protect the innocent from corruption and despair. In times of great strife, when this constant battle has threatened to overwhelm the many lands of Wraith, Sol has gifted his blessings upon his most devout followers, bestowing upon them the power to drive back the shadow. The radiant glory of the light grants them divine grace, enhancing their natural abilities, and lending to them the might of Sol. In recent times, as the demon Astri is unleashing the full force of its fiendish power upon the city, Sol has once again gifted his blessing upon the devout. Some have awakened to the calling of the light, finding their strength and talents augmented by Sol's favor. Others have found themselves marked by the sigil of one of Sol's heralds, choosing some of the light's followers as their charges in the battles to come. And this is a brand new entry into the lore of Solana, and it describes much of what we've seen in Monarch. Prism has found her talents and strengths augmented by Sol's favor, and Bolton has been marked by the sigil of one of Sol's heralds. It also speaks to a very interesting connection between Sol and the flow found within Arya, because both entities have been shown to, in times of great trouble or distress or danger, to grant their power or their favor or their blessings, whatever you want to say, to those that they think can help protect it. And it's this connection that I've found most interesting when reading back through the lore of Solana and Arya and how the lore has been expanded upon as the world has changed. So as we wrap up, I just want to say that I hope you enjoyed yourself. I hope you learned something about the Kingdom of Illumination, about Solana. And if you want to see more of this, if you want me to dive into the Demonastery, the Demonastery, however you want to say it, if you want to know more about um, any of the other regions, let me know in a comment below which one you'd want me to go to. Uh, I know that for the very next few videos, I will be covering the Demon Astery, and I will be covering the battle between those two forces, between the Shadow and the Light, because there is a lot of very interesting information, including some very strange and perhaps controversial uh, differences between the lore of Solana and the Demon Astery. As always, everybody, Thanks for watching.